This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio C, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It's a huge Monday, August 15th. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who has been waiting for this day for 13 years, Jerem Jordan. Will BYU be ranked in the AP preseason preseason top 25? It is not out. We are literally uh, waiting for it. We will give you that information as soon as it breaks. It's what we're going to talk about in trending regardless. So, hey, release it. So, uh, yeah, last time BYU was in the AP poll top 25 preseason, 2009. Yep. Your boy had just graduated. You we were in our 20s. You, we were young. When we were young, said the killers, you were in Grand Junction, uh, just sports newsing it so hard. Yep. KJCT News A. KJCT. Uh, you asked me, um, hey, do you want, we have an opening. Do you want to come here? And I said, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and then later I was like, dude, come interview here. Yeah. And uh, it didn't really work out, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to 2009. It, it didn't benefit us in any way, shape, or form, collectively, <laughs> or you, or me. Yeah. Oh, 13 years in the making, we hope. I know. I was we waiting hope. for Dennis Pitta to graduate soon after that. He didn't. Yeah. Um, until How about that? Max this... Hall and Dennis Pitta were the stars of the BYU football team the last time BYU was ranked in the preseason. Like, when we were in school, let's play that card right now. Uh, 06, like you were here, what, 05 to 08 or something? 06 to 09 for me. 05 to 09. I was like a super senior, I guess. Um, hey, good good basketball, good football, good yep. everything. Yes. It was good. Right after the apostasy known as 02 to 04 with the football team. We're in the midst of good football and an era of good football, BYU right yes. now. Is it enough to get them in the AP preseason top 25? Are you a little out? nervous? I am. I'm, I, I am nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. Like, it doesn't really matter. It's validating <laughs> like we talked about. But, like, if BYU is not in, I might blow a gasket. I'm, like, I'm, Weirdly what? nervous. I, I know. Like, I feel – it's like it's a game. It's not a game. Like it, doesn't, it matters, but it doesn't really – I don't know. Where it's a does, weird feeling right now. Yeah, where does BYU Twitter. football end up in the AP Top 25, if at all, when that poll is revealed <laughs> they're in just not a in few it. minutes? Come on, bro. Offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick joins us after the first scrimmage of BYU football training camp. Does he care at all about a preseason ranking? And what was the best single play – he saw from that opening scrimmage. Plus, Carson Lundell, star of BYU men's golf, joins us from New Jersey before he tees off on the first round of the U.S. Amateur Open Championship. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. We are moments away from the Associated Press Top 25 preseason AP poll to be released. Uh, we believe the writers to be more into it than the sports information directors, a.k.a. the coaches. So as soon as we have that, we will just blow up whatever we're doing in the show <laughs> and tell you about whether BYU is ranked and what it means. BYU was four spots out in the coaches' poll for what it's worth. <laughs> BYU that's, offensive that's lineman Blake Freeland named preseason first team All American hey! via the athletic. Freeland anchoring the left side of an offensive line that played a huge part in BYU scoring 33 points a game last year and allowing just 12 sacks on the season. BYU held its first scrimmage at fall camp in Lavelle Edwards Stadium Saturday. Jaron Hall says opportunities like this are what the offense needs. We need more reps, obviously, as a, as a, as a team and going against our defense, as many team reps as we can get, just to simulate the flow of a game, the speed of a game. The scrimmages are great for that, going through our full team routine. So I think as many snaps as we can get against our defense the next two weeks leading up to game prep, is, I think is the most important thing for us. All right, we heard from Jaron Hall. The moment has arrived. Brand new AP preseason college football top 25 is out. Are the Cougars in? BYU Sports Nation breaking news. And the answer is yes. Number 25. <laughs> Just in. <laughs> like I'm like I'm happy, but I'm also disappointed. At number 25, the last team in. <laughs> this is this is where like Louisiana Monroe should be. It's not BYU. You know what I mean? Like what? We'll react oh, more in a man. sec. Holy cow! We'll react more in a sec. Yes. I'm happy, but I'm also like what? 
Number 25, Jerem. <laughs> it's how it needs to be. <laughs> Zach Wilson did not have a top 25 type of weekend. Torres meniscus could have been much worse. Has a bone bruise after Friday's exhibition against the Eagles. He's expected to miss two to four weeks and will have arthroscopic surgery in Los Angeles tomorrow. Best of luck to Zach on a quick recovery. Absolutely. Just glad it wasn't worse. Yeah, I mean, the fear was it was ACL. And ugh, great news that he's uh, going to not have to play much in the preseason. He can just get ready for the regular season. Cougars in the NFL of note. Tyler Algier, three carries, 25 yards for the Falcons against Jamal Williams and the Lions. Two carries, for 12 yards. Tyson Williams had a touchdown for the Colts. 25 yards as well rushing. Samson Nakua had a catch. Chris Wilcox, six tackles six in that tackles. game. Neil Pau, two catches for 10. Dax Milne, two catches for 30. One of those catches, he had a long run. It was yeah, great, was great grab maybe and Maybe the best highlight along with Tyler Algier's run. Really nice. And then uh, Troy Warner, four tackles for the Buccaneers. So many guys. I love it. I love that that takes a long time to recap. <laughs> we'll spend all down. We love Some dudes. It. We love it. Number three, BYU women's soccer lost 2-0 against number 10 North Carolina on the road Saturday night in an exhibition game in Chapel Hill. Tarles outshot the Cougars 26-6. Kind of put BYU on their heels, maybe unexpectedly. An eye-opener for sure before BYU opens the season against Cal State Fullerton on the road. Let's go. Carson Lundell and David Timmons get off today in the U.S. Amateur Championship in New Jersey in 90 minutes. Lundell making his third straight trip. Tim in second in a row. Also, Elijah Turner brought Goyan qualified and will participate. Four BYU Cougars in this event. Awesome. Congratulations to AB for three. Alex Barcelo is signed a professional basketball contract with Colossus H Hotels. He'll be playing in Greece. Let's go. And Michael Rucker pitched one and two thirds with three Ks, giving up four hits and a run and an 8 5 loss to the Reds. For the Cubs, who loses to the Reds? That's weird. <laughs> Not many teams. <laughs> Not many these teams, days. man. Come on. Not many teams. All rise and wow. shout. It's time for a top 25 edition of What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so <laughs> are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Number 25, BYU just in <laughs> the first preseason poll, but in nonetheless for the first time in 13 years. The first one we care about. In that preseason AP poll. Yeah. Jerem, now that you've had all of like, I don't know, three minutes to uh, digest this, what's your reaction to BYU being number 25 in the AP preseason college football poll? My body language is super defensive, right? I cross my arms. <laughs> uh, let's walk through some of the numbers. The good news. BYU's in the preseason top 25. This is where they belong. They belong in this. Uh, because they return the quarterback, 85% mm -hmm. of production. Yes, Tyler Alg Algier does not come back, but a lot of production in terms of who is coming back on the season. Christopher Brook, ton of yards, ton of experience. He's the one that should be affected by this the most today to go, oh, the difference between me and Tyler Algier, I'm going to show you that I'm on par with this man and can help BYU in this place. Uh, 12th time, all-time, BYU's in the preseason. Only the 12th time 25. ever. Ever, right? Third since 98. This is just the third time in the 20s, by the way, of those 12. Typically, BYU is inside the top 20 preseason. Yeah. Um, you know, highest since 09, like we talked about. Um, BYU is seeking to finish for a third year in a row in the AP Top 25. That'd be just the fifth time three years in a row. Okay, th my reaction is BYU should be higher. Like, what could BYU do? Am I getting picky here, by the way, that BYU should be higher? I, I feel like I'm a little picky, but what could BYU do to get higher? BYU went 6-1 versus Power 5s, 5-0 versus the Pac-12. Yep. Returns the quarterback, returns all the production, has the respect of a lot of people nationally. Why isn't BYU like 17th here? Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that. that. Like, I don't think the average AP voter knows that Tyler Algier is gone. Like, I don't think that's the talking point. I think it's that BYU is not in a Power 5 conference, therefore they're treated like a G5 in this case. I think BYU is treated like a G5 with this ranking. The one way to fix this is happening next July 1st. It's BYU gets into a Power 5 conference, and when you win the 10 games... the respect is built in if you're a Power 5 team that yes, wins 10? Yes, if you do the same... Although it'll take a couple years for that perception to happen. It's not, like, automatic. You're still, like, in people's minds, people go, oh, yeah, BYU's in the Big 12. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. This should be where, like, Louisiana Monroe gets. If Louisiana okay. Monroe or whatever <laughs> had had gone 10 and 3, returned the quarterback and 85% of production, 
and finished 19th, which is what BYU did in the AP poll, right? Yeah, yeah. You would go, they're the 25th best team in the preseason poll. This is disrespect. I think BYU <laughs> should take this personally like Michael Jordan the last hand and go, and I took that personally. That's how I feel about this. I think BYU should be higher, man. For what it's worth, BYU gets into the poll at number 25 ahead of the likes of Tennessee, who is the first team out, Texas, two spots out, mm. Iowa, Penn State, and LSU. Those are your first five out, Jerem. Tennessee, Texas, Iowa, Penn State, and LSU. Only three non-power fives in this poll. Like, it, again, it's hard to crack it. You're always doing it as, as an independent. You're getting ahead of these teams, which is nice. Yes. But, like, in a vacuum, BYU should be higher. I know it's not in a vacuum. But, like, what, what could BYU do more last year to mer- and return to merit more than 25? Well, isn't it interesting that the final three teams in, 23, 24, and 25, are all new members of the Big 12? Cincinnati, number 23, mm-hmm. Houston, number 24, BYU number 25. Cincinnati's coming off a playoff appearance. They lost Desmond Ritter and a bunch of NFL guys. Nine NFL draft picks. Nine. They're number 23. Houston. Okay, a nod for Houston. UCF is about 10, 8 to 10 spots out. But my goodness, only three non-Power 5 teams in. And all three of those teams, Jerem, are going to the Big 12 next July 1st. So those three teams won't even be group of five teams again. In less than a year from right. now. It, it would be an all – you could say in a way this is like an all-power five, top 25 in the preseason. And That's as, very, very strange. And as we, and as we look at the, the poll, uh, for those who missed it, right, uh, Alabama one, Ohio State two, Georgia three. Shocking. Clemson does not deserve four, but they get it. Yeah, well, let's talk about um, other teams that don't deserve or maybe they and do. And we're not mentioning that team okay. up north. We don't care. Okay, Notre um, Dame number five. five. Notre Dame number five. Five. Okay, what did, let's see. Whoa. We, okay, in the closest to the pin conversation, your boy had Notre Dame at five. Yes. Okay, well done. Yes. Well done. Well, we'll revisit oh. all of that. Oh, we're, we're doing that later. No, okay. we're doing it now, right? Okay, Baylor number 10. Oh, oh. who had Baylor 10? Oregon who number Baylor 11? Who had Oregon, Oregon 11? Oregon oh. number 11? No, Adam 12. Like, Adam what, 12. what did Oregon do to deserve the number 11 ranking <laughs> Phil in Knight. the preseason top 25? Nike. They've got a new coach. They've got a transfer quarterback. New coach don't matter. Jordan. Like they lost. Yeah. They got absolutely blitzed by Utah twice. They Notre Dame has a new coach. They're fifth. Well, he's been around though. Like this is a new staff at Oregon. Like Cristobal, that whole staff is. But done. it was the national champs, DC. Notre Dame, like, still has a guy that's been around the program for a long time. Like yeah. he knows the players. The national champs, DC, is at Oregon. That's why they have that respect. Right? Arkansas number nineteen, BYU number twenty-five. And BYU is well in as the 2015. They received 234 points. That's 54 points more than the next closest team, Tennessee, at 180. Yes. Uh, BYU is 29 <laughs> points behind Houston, who was that 24 spot. Houston and Cincinnati are basically neck and neck in those uh, number of votes and points received. Let's not break down the points. I'm just we're, saying. We're I'm just saying, like, BYU is well we're in. We're in, baby. They're well in. Okay, close to the pin. We guessed Friday. Let's walk through it. Yeah. Uh, you said BYU 21. I said 19. Close to the pin. So I, I, so I went on BYU. I, yeah, I'm, uh, man. I nailed Notre Dame at five. You said seven. Uh, let's see. Oregon at uh, 11. I had him 12. You yeah. had him 14. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Baylor. I had him 10. Adam nine. Got it. Uh, <laughs> real close. Nailed on that one. Notre Dame and Baylor. And then R. Kansas, uh, 19th. I had him at 18. You had him at 16. So wow. I was eight spots off. Total, you were 13. Yeah, well Five done. strokes. Pretty good, Carson Lindell. Congratulations on that. The moral um, victory. You know? the, the title of the show is BYU Sports Nation, and I was close around Bri- BYU. Bri- that's, Brigham. That, that is my that – is That's your <laughs> – going to manipulate. The, I like this part. It's my justification was, to yeah. feel better about losing. This thing was good for me. I will only point out this Jared, thing. Yeah, no, this, this is the, you know – I lost, but margin of victory. I wasn't thought that great, it was right? Notre Dame Sports Nation until I saw the monitor, yeah. and then I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot." Wow! And then I saw my paycheck, and I remembered it was also from BYU. Did BYU get disrespected? We'll discuss more of this later. Yes, is the answer. Coming up, why Andy Reid's the most relatable NFL coach ever, and my conversation with BYU offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick. Does he care at all about preseason top twenty-five? Is he superstitious? And what was the best play he saw? from the first scrimmage in camp. This is the BYU Sports Nation. Louisiana Monroe. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to
to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Check out After Further Review tomorrow, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app as the guys discuss Ben Bywater, Isaac Rex, Jacob Conover, Pepe Tanuvase, and others as we get closer to the start of the 2022 season. We are live from Studio C. If you just missed it, BYU football ranked number 25 in the preseason AP college football poll. Number 20. We made it! I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Over the weekend, after BYU's first scrimmage, I had the opportunity to speak with BYU Offensive Coordinator Aaron Roderick about rankings, actual scrimmage stuff, and, uh, you know, how BYU feels as they head into the season. Aaron, it feels like an appropriate day for a hat. I've got my hats on my wall lined up. You've got your hat on. Are you a hat guy every day that you go to training camp? Yeah, I always wear one when I'm working, when I'm coaching, yeah. And so I, yeah, I wear hats a lot. Yeah, in general, I guess. Too. Okay. Does, is there a lot of thought process that goes into your daily hat selection? Because some guys are weird about this. How are you with that process? I don't have any superstitions. If that's what you're getting at, I just yeah, yeah, wear whatever I'm feeling that day. But it's, there's no superstition involved. Okay, and that was that was leading to my next question. So you're not superstitious at all. You have no uh, superstition. I, no. Uh, there, yeah, I. Yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't want to be uh, bound by wearing the same underwear or some sweaty, <laughs> sweaty hat or, you know, whatever. I'm just, yeah, I don't believe in any of this. <laughs> no boundaries in that regard. I know that's, that's, yeah. that's uh, not okay. good. Okay. With the superstition question out of the way, um, you just recently wrapped up the first scrimmage of fall camp uh, from your perspective under the hat. How would you rate that overall first scrimmage? Well, the, the main thing we wanted to accomplish today was take care of the football and, you know, just play clean ball, you know, and I thought we did that for the most part. We didn't have any turnovers. We didn't have, a, we didn't even have a ball on the ground uh, as far as like, you know, there were no fumbles on the ground or anything like that. Um, we had one near interception. That would be the whole, the only like, you know, bad play that way. Um, and then we were, we had very few penalties. I think we had one holding penalty. Uh, one false start and one one uh, delay of game. So you know, I, and that was more my fault than the players. So um, those two areas, I thought we did a good job just keeping the game clean. Obviously, in a first scrimmage, your execution is never quite there yet. So there's a lot of plays today that were like, you know, a little bit disappointing. You, you know, you want to see better execution, and I'm confident that that's coming. Um, but as far as taking care of the ball and the penalties, it was all positive. 
Okay, two follow-up questions to that. The first, dealing with the turnovers, because this is a team that only turned the ball over 12 total times last year, four in one game against Boise State. I mean, you've been very good taking care of the ball. What's the key to success there? Because that has seemed to be a, a real boon of success for BYU over the last two years. Well, I just told you I'm not superstitious, but I'm like nervous now about uh, talking about how good, we, how well we've taken care of the ball and, and uh, you know, <laughs> have, and having it, uh, the tide go the other way on us this year. But I, I think, you know, we emphasize it a lot as much as more, more than any team I've ever been a part of. Um, it's literally the only thing Kalani ever talks about to the offense is about taking care of the ball. Everything else he leaves to the offensive coaches, but he, he emphasizes taking care of the football. Um, it's part of our game plan always just, you know, I don't want to get into details of that, but we, we, um, we're, we try to be as smart as we can about taking care of the football, how many risks we take, and then we practice the heck out of uh, carrying it the right way, holding it the right way. And, and everybody does that. Every good Division One team is going to do that. I, I just think that um, we have players here who are really conscientious about it and guys that that believe in, in, in our program and what we're doing and understand how important the ball is. And so I got to give most of the credit to our players. They're the ones that are – playing in the game and they, they're the ones that are hanging on to it. Now, my second follow-up question to your comments on uh, the training camp scrimmage uh, deals with your playbook. Um, how much more expansive is your playbook from last year to this year, given that you bring back your starting quarterback specifically? It's very similar to last year. There's, uh, I wouldn't say there's not more, there's not more, more uh, offense than there was a year ago. It's just, we put it in a little bit faster this year because we had yeah. a veteran team. So our installation, we got, we got through it more quickly than normal just to give the veteran players, you know, a challenge in those early practices. And, you know, the downside of that is just the young players have been having a tough time catching up. But what I saw on the scrimmage today was some, some young players start to show that they're figuring it out. And some guys did some good things out there and, uh, so, but the overall volume is a lot different. And then, yeah. How much does what happens in today's scrimmage affect what you do <clears throat> over the remainder of camp? Like, is this first scrimmage kind of like, okay, this is clearly what we need to work on. And so you adjust like the practice plan based on what you saw today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, some of the, there were some things that showed up today that I've, I've, I've already got in my mind. Hey, we need to, we need to emphasize this on Monday. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that comes to mind from today's scrimmage is just, you know, you, you start thinking ahead to the next scrimmage. Okay, well, how much, so, you know, there were some guys today that were limited. Some guys that were held out entirely, a few guys that were limited, and then some guys that went live, tackled to the ground. And so now, now you start saying, okay, well, next scrimmage, do we hold out, you know, more people? Or no, do, do, these, do a couple of the guys that got held out need to play more? You know. So there's some, there's some discussions there to be had this week with um, our staff, but uh, you gained a lot of good information from today and, and I'll get even more when I watch the film, and, you know, when I'm done with this interview, I'm going to go watch the tape. Sure. Aaron Roderick, BYU offensive coordinator with us on BYU Sports Nation following training cramp, uh, training camp scrimmage number one. Um, you, you may have already answered this in, in part uh, with your previous answers, but What's the number one thing you've learned about your team that maybe you didn't know for sure about essentially a week and a half into training camp? There's probably not any big surprises about our team, but there's a, the fun thing about training camp and spring ball is there's always a few surprises, you know, individual players who, who, you know, surprise you. And, and we've had a few of those. I don't know that, those guys are necessarily game ready at this moment, but it's fun when you see a young player show you some signs that, Hey, this guy might help us at some point this season, you know, or maybe he's going to play in game one. Maybe it's going to be mid season, but he's ahead of the other young guys. You know, that's, that's fun to see sometimes. And there's been a few of those. So if you're comfortable naming names, who are some of those guys that have quote unquote surprised you? Uh, Ethan Erickson is one who's had a good camp. Um, he's 
you know, and he's behind some good tight ends. So I don't want to like create a, a crazy expectation that he's going to have a huge impact right away, but he's earning our, you know, I'm, I'm gaining a lot of confidence in him that he's going to be a good player for us. Um, Parker Kingston is a guy who's shown up as a freshman who uh, played quarterback in high school and you'd never know it. He, lo he looks like a wide receiver and plays like one. And, uh, you know, again, I don't know when his time is going to come, but he's going to be a good player for us. And, and uh, Trevin Osler would be one who really stands out. And he's been playing left tackle as a true freshman. He, he's very athletic and looks good out there. And th that's just a few names. I mean, there's, there are other – there, there are others, but uh, I enjoy that part of camp is just seeing those guys emerge. And, and uh, you know, after our season last year, you know, you, you never know when you're going to need those guys. Yeah, let's stay with the pass catchers because, understandably, a lot of attention has been paid to those guys with the likes of Puka Nakua and Gunnar Romney and Keanu Hill, Chase Roberts, Cody Epps. Uh, what have you seen from them in camp that, uh, lets you know that, okay, this, this group is, you know, they're what we thought they were, which is really good. You know, what, what are they doing in camp to, to show that? Well, they're just getting a little better each day. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a good solid group, you know, Puka and Gunner obviously are proven, you know, guys. I thought Keanu made a really good statement last year when he got his opportunities, he played well. And he's having a good camp as well. And then we're seeing uh, Cosper. Braden Cosper is a guy who's been hmm. in our receiver rotation every year for, what, three years straight? And right before the first game, he got hurt. And he's had, he's had really bad luck. Um, but we, he's someone we have a lot of confidence in. He's playing well. Chase Roberts is getting better every day. He has a lot of ability. And Cody Epps. Same thing, similar to Cosper. Cody Epps is a guy who played as a true freshman, somebody we, we thought was going to play a big role last year, missed the whole season. He's back and playing well. So, um, you know, I don't want to overstate it about those younger guys that haven't played a lot yet. I, I, think, um, I think all those guys are going to be – you're going to see them in games this year, kind of like what you saw out of, out of uh, Keanu last year. It's just a matter of – when will their time come and how many snaps are they going to play in the first game and second game? And then does that, their role grow or shrink, you know, that, that, that just, those things ebb and flow throughout the season. Um, mm. And you just have to see who's healthy each week, who's available to play and you put together the best game plan you, you can with who's available. Aaron Roderick with us on BYU Sports Nation. Just a few more before we wrap up, Coach. Um, but because a lot of people didn't get to see the scrimmage today, through your eyes, what was the best individual play, the best single play you saw in the scrimmage today on offense? Um, Tanner Wall ran a really good route on a third third down. He, he made a great play on it, caught a touchdown pass from Cade Finnegan. It was it was an outstanding throw and catch, and uh, that was that was the highlight of the day. Yeah, I was. Okay. Oh, Jaron Hall. Yeah. He balled the back corner of the end zone. He made a great catch. Ooh. Okay. Okay. We may have to bother your, bother your video guys to, to see if they, if they caught that one. There's an angle that wouldn't give too much away. Um, but Jaron Hall has joked at this that, yeah, defense and practice, they do drop eight a lot. And it's annoying as a quarterback because, you know, it's dump off for five yards, dump it off to the right side for seven yards. But he's like, I'll do it if that's what the defense is giving me. But, that they're trying to take away our, our big play capability. Um, how do you how do you approach that? Like if if defenses are going to do drop eight against you a lot, like what what is the game plan against that? Because it's annoying, but I I guess there's a way around it, right? What is that way? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not going to tell you the game plan, but we don't we don't get a lot of drop eight because we run the ball so well. So not not a lot of teams are going to drop eight against us. They got to get people you know, close to the ball to try to stop our run game. So we don't see a ton of that. But um, what I will say is one of, the, one of the frustrating things of fall camp is, you know, you're not tackling to the ground. You're, you know, we're, we're trying to play smart against each other. Our, our first offense and our first defense, we're trying to compete hard, be physical, but take care of each other, you know, get to the first game healthy. And, you know, so when you're doing that, some of those run plays in practice, you know, there's, a, there's an art, you know, we think we blocked the play pretty well and got 
you know, a decent amount of yards and then they'll blow the whistle for a one yard game and everybody's like mad about it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the uh, back and forth of practice, you know, uh, um, but it's good for us to, to have to work through that. And uh, our defense has done a great job of um, just um, practicing the right way with us. And yeah. I think we've, we've done the same thing for them. And um, when you get our, best 11 out there on the field on defense those guys are pretty good and those linebackers fly around sure yeah the chirping on the hypotheticals because you can't tackle is really fun to watch between yeah. the offense and defense. they yeah. uh they, they let their their opinions and thoughts be known and that's really fun to watch okay uh last one for you here coach the associated press top 25 comes out on monday and i know that as a coach you don't care a ton about it. Um, some of the guys seem to care about that, but w if, and when you see BYU pop up as a preseason AP top 25 team, what, what runs through your mind? Well, really what I've tried to talk to our offense about is let's focus on where we're going to be at the end of the season. Mm. And what matters is, our first game, we play South Florida. You know, if you're ranked or not ranked or whatever, none of that matters if you're not ready to play in your first game and get on there and go take care of business. And so our only focus right now is 100% South Florida. They they have added a lot of good players. They gave us a heck of a game last year. I mean, that, that, they were tough. I was impressed. I was impressed with how hard they played for full four quarters. They could have packed it in at halftime down, I think they're down 21. Yeah, uh, they came out and what a what a statement about the character of those those uh, players in that program. And, and now they've I know they've added some some transfers and defensive coordinator is a veteran coach who's done a great job everywhere he's been. They, I mean, this it's going to be it's going to be a tough game. And so if you start thinking about other things that have nothing to do with that game, then you're limiting your chances to play well. And so. All we're focused on is just let's go play well against South Florida. And that other stuff will take care of itself if you do what you're supposed to do and win games. Fantastic. Aaron, we appreciate the time. Uh, I'll ask this one last thing. Um, when you are trying to avoid the media poison, yet you have to do interviews, you have to, you know, traverse through things like talking to me, and I get it, it's a pain in the neck. How do you, how do you balance that? How do you, how do you keep those things separated and compartmentalize? Well, I, we just, you know, we want to play with a lot of confidence. We want to, we want to be a team that when we step on the field, we believe in ourselves and we, you know, we're good and we know we're good, but we have enough respect for the game to know that if you don't take care of business, UAB can beat you in a bowl game, you know, yeah. if you're not ready to play. And, you know, and, and that, that was a great lesson. And, and unfortunately, every once in a while, this game will humble you. And so, you know, we're trying to have just, a good balance of confidence in ourselves, but also enough humility to know that the game will humble you fast if you don't respect it. And that means, again, not looking at rankings or, or uh, what somebody said about you, you know, whether it was, whether it was good or bad, what somebody said about you in the media or on social media or whatever. I mean, all that stuff is baloney. It's, it's all about your next opponent and doing what it takes to win that game. And that's all we're focused on. Well said. He is not a man of superstitions, but he is a man of fashionable hats. He is Aaron Roderick, the offensive coordinator. Coach, thanks so much for the time. We'll talk to you again soon. Great to talk to you. Jeremy gave us a fantastic look into uh, the roster three years from now with uh, some Trevin of Osler guys. and yeah. Tanner Wall and Ethan they, Erickson. It, super insightful, and I'm glad he brings up the point at the very end about hey, we we're good and we know we're good, but we got to respect the game. It can humble you quick. We or lost you UAB. lose to a team like UAB. Yes, yes. And that's why BYU is 25. <laughs> Coming up, <laughs> Carson Lendell joins us prior to teeing off in the U.S. Amateur. Plus, how concerned are we and you about Zach Wilson's meniscus injury? This is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets, 
all just for using my account. That's my style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your my style checking account today. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. Super Girls of Summer are back. What kind of friend are you looking for before school starts again? Kind. Creative. Honest. Fun. With so many good friends, you're sure to find one who speaks just to you. So make the connection before summer's over. Watch the Super Girls of Summer only on BYU TV or on the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. This is BYU Sports Nation. Interact with the show. Get uh, content throughout the day on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and future platforms, TBD. He is Jerem. I am Spencer. Our show is just barely in the top 25 as well. Let's whip it. That's it. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Maris, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. I thought among nationally run by their universities, TV daily shows. We were number one, bro. Well, in that What's regard, our competition? We very, very qualified number one, but a number one no less. <laughs> Zach Wilson tore his meniscus, suffered a bone bruise on a scramble Saturday. Ah, scheduled to have surgery on Tuesday in LA on a scale of one to 10. How concerned are you about the stand? Uh, probably put it at about a three. Um, message a little bit with Zach's dad, Mike, over the weekend, and they're very optimistic that he's going to go to the right surgeon, that things are going to be okay. He's going to L.A., I would think so. And that he'll be ready maybe for week number one, which would be fantastic. Yeah. September 9th uh, against the Baltimore Ravens. Let's hope Zach's ready to go by week number one. If not, week two. Uh, it just, I mean, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, no. Oh, no. And my, my concern level was at like a 20. That okay, it was like He's ACL. done. He's yeah. done for the year. Yep. If it's just a meniscus and there's nothing more significant when they actually begin the surgery, then I expect to see him in week one. So my concern level is like three or four now. Yeah, my concern level is like a five or six because he did have a knee injury last year. Same knee? Same knee. That's concerning. And it was non-contact as well. So let's go. Hopefully he gets it uh, surgically repaired and, and uh, is ready to go. The good news, he doesn't have to play preseason with the Jets. <laughs> Okay, so Zach clearly did not have the best weekend of all of the Cougars in the NFL preseason. Who did? Tyler Algier, three carries, 25 yards. Tyson Williams had a touchdown. Uh, Jamal Williams, two carries, 12 yards. Dax Millen had a nice catch and run. He had two catches over. Who's the guy that had the best weekend? Brady Christensen blocking. Just kidding. Um, love that, though. Tyson Williams, because he had a touchdown. Yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to beat a touchdown. I like Tyler yeah, Algier as like the second best. Mm -hmm. Tyson scores a touchdown. In the long run. Yeah, it looked yep. really good. And then Dax Mills catch and run was really nice too. That's great. Okay, who's your most overrated, underrated, ranked teams in the preseason AP Top 20? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, um, <laughs> I'm going to go with, and listen, this is based on, because these polls were based on like what happened the previous year, right? Are they? The Pac 12 has three teams in the top 15. BYU beat the reigning Pac-12 champions head-to-head. -head. I, I heard that. They destroyed the Pac-12 champion Utes. Oregon twice. USC, I know they got a new coach. They got transfer quarterback. They're number 14. Like, whatever. Utah number seven, that's not even where my biggest concern is. 11 Oregon and 14 USC after a year in the Pac-12 that was abysmal. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, Oregon at 11's real high. I'll probably go most overrated team. I think Oregon's top 25 team, um, but the most underrated is Brigham Young University. 
I, I think BYU should be like at 17. At 25. Like why, should, why isn't BYU higher? And there are voters, Ralph Russo specifically, that writes for the Associated Press. is like, ah, I feel like BYU at 25 is too low. I thought they'd be closer to like 21 or 22 at, at the worst. That's And that was your guess of the writers. What did you feel? What do you feel like? I BYU feel like BYU is a top 20 team. 17 is where I feel. I feel like BYU yeah. is a top 20 team. They're Based in at number 25. Uh, other underrated teams. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Underrated. People. Notre Dame. No one ever gives them a chance, said no one. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe Ole Miss. Like, Lane Kiffin, I think, had a – like, Lane Kiffin's going to come back. He's got Jackson Dart as quarterback now. Like, I think yeah. Ole Miss at 21 is too low as well. Okay. NC there, State there you go. at 13. The ACC has – uh, these other teams not named Clemson that you're like, sorry, what? what? They're Wait, good? Chorus is good at football. They're good? All right, Jerem. Yeah, they got a history. USF has named Jerry Bohannon their starting quarterback against BYU. Yes. In how many days? Countdown to the Bulls. 19 days. I have to look at you like, how are we doing this one? 19 days away. 19 Under three okay. weeks. Okay. Bo Hannon's the starting quarterback. He was the starter at Baylor. Jeremy was the clear difference maker, but he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't. However, uh, he's still capable, right? He drove Timmy McLean, the backup quarterback that competed against BYU last year, into the transfer. Dollar store Michael Vick, man. Is Bo Hannon the starting quarterback for USF a good thing or a bad thing for BYU? It's fine. Uh, first off, hello, Jerry. Yes. So BYU saying it. 18 to 28 touchdown, a pick, one sack. Baylor ran for 309 yards, 6.4 carry, four touchdowns. That was the issue. Not super concerned. Good player, no doubt. Good player. He's not going to make a massive difference, I don't think. Because Timmy McLean was really good against BYU. I was I, honestly, I'm I'm more worried about Timmy McLean's scrambling ability. They had like a fourth and eleven where he ran for a first yeah. down last year. I was like, what is that? Yeah. So his scrambling ability is what made me feel uneasy. Yeah. Well, Hannon's a good quarterback. He's to me is a game manager. He's, yes. a, game, he's a game manager. Yeah. So I, I, I'm kind of in the middle of this. Like, yeah, it's not it's not a good thing for BYU, but it's not it's not bad. Like, he's just kind of, like, in the middle, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of splitting in the middle. Third-ranked BYU women's soccer lost 2 nothing at 10th-ranked North Carolina. Does that matter? Yes, and here's what matters more than the actual score, Jeremy. The fact that they were outshot 26-6. to That's bad. BYU just did not create any offense. We're so used to a team that, being the other so, way. that is out shooting their opponents 26-6. Yeah. to six. But yep. now you're finally starting to feel the loss of Michaela Coulahan and Cameron Tucker, who were so aggressive up front. BYU needs to be they need to find the the young ladies that are going to be those aggressors on offense. Yes. Listen, straight up, BYU women's soccer is overrated. Uh, number three is too high for this group. I would put this group at, like, number 12. They're really good. Number three is another level, though. They're getting a lot of love, obviously, because of last year. Great spring, 9-0-1-1. BYU women's soccer is going to be awesome this year. I, that was a huge test. Now they can take some lessons learned, go out there and be good. It's going to be a fun season. But BYU should probably be, like, Closer to 10 to 15 range right now. Beat Cal State Fullerton. Okay, rebound, take the hard lesson North yeah. Carolina, and use it to get better. Hey, didn't even count in the win last call. This is fantastic. And Peter King's Football Morning in America column today, he tells the following exchange from Chiefs head coach Andy Reid in a trip to Italy. Okay, Andy Reid and his wife Tammy in Italy, and they got there. Andy Reid had a conversation with one of the locals at the start of the trip. The local. What kind of wine do you like, Andy? Reed, I don't drink wine. Local, coffee, what about coffee? I don't drink coffee, says Andy. Local, you don't like wine or coffee? What are you doing in Italy? <laughs> Reed, I like to eat. <laughs> hey, that's on brand. Did you expect anything different from Andy no. Reed? No, just, absolutely not. It's the coach. Coming He's up. our guy. Rise and shout out to BYU's Weekend Warriors. And we go to New Jersey to get you and Carson Lundell ready for the opening round of the U.S. Amateur Championship. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. The time is 1,500 hours.
again with a pair of aces? I don't know how you keep beating me. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this and this, and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, as the kids say, to BYU Sports Nation's YouTube channel for whole episodes, what's trending, interviews of every show. Check it out on the YouTube. Welcome back on a glorious Monday. We're that much closer to college football season, and frankly, it's game day for our next guests alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. It is our pleasure now to welcome in Carson Lundell of BYU Men's yeah. Golf all the way from New Jersey as he pre prepares for the U.S. Amateur. He's at the highest level of amateur golf. Carson, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Okay, walk us through a day like today when uh, there's pressure on. You, you got to tee off. You got to take care of business. What's your schedule like today? Yeah, so today I just, I mean, I i have an afternoon tea time, so I kind of just slept as long as I possibly could, make sure I was well rested. Um, and then I'll go over to the course in about 40 minutes, um, get some lunch and kind of hang out for a little bit, and then give myself about an hour, hour 15 to to practice and, and kind of, you know, get locked in and, and get ready to roll. What's the pressure, or maybe it's no pressure, I don't know, of this tournament versus competing for BYU at a high level where you played in NCAA championships. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's honestly pretty similar. Um, something like in U.S. Amateur, uh, I mean, luckily I played, this is my third straight one, and, and the first time I played, I did really well. So I have a little bit, you know, of comfort and experience in it. But it's just, it's a big tournament. I mean, anytime you have a master's exemption and U.S. Open exemption on the line, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty big. So, yeah, it's a big stage. Is this fun for you or is it more pressure packed? What are your emotions like? Yeah, no, that's a good question. No, it's, I mean, it's a ton of fun. I mean, this is the whole reason I play the game, right? Is a, ch a chance to play, you know, in a major or, you know, any type of professional event. So, you know, this is the whole reason I play the game. And obviously, yeah, it's, you know, I'm going to feel some pressure out there. But at the end of the day, it's just golf. You know, it's just the same thing I've been doing the last, you know, eight years of my life all day, every day. So, you know, I'm just going to try to go out and hit fairways and greens, I guess, right? <laughs> what's the, uh, uh, what's the uh, you know, uniform combination for you today? What are you picking to wear? Wow, what a great question. I literally am <laughs> trying to figure it out. <laughs> <before this. laughs> what, what are the options? I have what like are we three thinking? three or four shirts and two pairs of shorts. I was like, all right, now this one or that one, or <laughs> you know, hopefully make it to match play and then wear this one, so... Yeah, I don't know. It'll be a game time decision in about 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. I do like the confidence, though, because it is funny when, like, a playoff, you know, a team will, will pack for a playoff game or something, and, and it'll be like, okay, do they have two games? Do they have one? How many days in the hotel are they booking, right? You brought enough to win this tournament, I take it. Of course. Of course. Um, I mean, my goal is to, to be here until I think, I think what, Saturday is the final round. So that's my goal, to be here till Saturday. And so I brought enough to where, you know, that's hopefully where I end up. BYU golf standout Carson Lundell joining us from New Jersey where he is preparing to play at Ridgewood Country Club, the opening round of the U.S. Amateur Championship. Uh, how does the course look and how does the course play? Is it more link style? Is it lined with trees? Like what, what type of difficulties are you dealing with when it comes to course layout? Ridgewood is a, it's a beast. It's, I mean, I don't, I don't normally call courses beast very often, but it's a, it's a big track. It's long. It's the rough is 
I mean, you can't even hardly see your ball when it's when it goes in the rough. And if you are in the rough, most of most of the time, there's no chance you can even get it to the green. So you just mm. have to kind of chip out, and it's long. I mean, you're you're looking at about you know 7,500 yards more or less wow. at a par 71 at sea level. And I mean, it's tree lined. It's pretty, I mean, pretty narrow. So it's you know all all around. It's a good track, and I, I mean. This is the kind of course I love though. I love just a just a big course where you just, you know, got to every shot matters. You know, you can't afford to to have one bad shot. So I I mean I I can't wait to get out there and play it. Yeah, with uh, that many yards and uh, the deep rough, it sounds like your typical United States Open course, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it seriously is. Like I I've heard multiple of the guys be like, "No, I think this rough is is worse than US Open rough." Like oh. it is it's crazy. It's crazy. You're playing with three other teammates as well in the uh, amateur, which is cool. David Timmons, of course, Elijah Turner, and uh, Brock Goyan. What's it like to have four Cougs involved here? Oh, it's a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun. I mean, BYU is well represented here. And, yeah, it's just it's great to look over and, and see, you know, a bunch of my best buddies out there on the course at, the, you know, you know, pretty much the biggest amateur event in the entire world. And to have four of us here is pretty special. Having played in, uh, like you said, two previous amateurs, what have you learned in those that are it's going to help you today? Yeah, I mean, they were so different. At uh, the one at Bandon Dunes, I just, you know, I was just so patient, just so, so, so patient. And, you know, I, I, I had a great first day. And that second day, when you're in, you know, a good spot is extremely pressure-packed. Um, and then at Oakmont last year, you know, I kind of got the, you know, I guess the bad luck of the draw on the tee times is only one of only one guy from match play of the 64 got in from my wave. And I kind of felt myself pressing last year. You know, I, I knew I was a little bit behind the eight ball and, and, you know, I, I, I felt like I was kind of pressing, you know, to get birdies and to be more aggressive, which kind of ended up stinging me. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, this, this U S amateur, I'm just trying to be patient. I'm trying to let, let everything come to me. I'm going to take what, you know, what I'm given and, be aggressive when I can and, you know, take my medicine when, you know, when I need to do that as well. So listen, summon the performances you had at 11 under in the Cougar classic and 10 under at the regional, you, you were, you were uh, lights out. Also you're in New Jersey. If you could play quarterback for the jets, just uh, not go hit up the facility. They need some of the next two to four weeks for Zach for a second. <laughs> if you have a minute. I know. I know. Yeah. I've thought about it. I mean, I, I can sling it. So <laughs> probably not as well as him, but <laughs> I can give you a 40 yarder. Sure. <laughs> Carson, great to catch up with you. Enjoy it out there today. Uh, we're we're going to be following closely and let's give you some BYU sports nation karma to go and rock that course. Always, always. Okay. Thank you guys. You got it. Carson Lundell on BYU sports station. Rock Ridgewood, yeah. right? Let's go. Rock yeah. the Ridgewood. No, seriously. Uh, like when, when he's really good and when he was his best is those two tournaments I mentioned. If he can summon that performance again, which he totally can. He's in contention there. He was like a medalist winner at an NCAA regional. Yeah. No, I, I he mean, he's he's one of those guys that is like next in line. Yeah. You know we we had the quarterback factory picture with quarterbacks? We need that with golf. Like a like a cool, list of stars. Yes, a, just a lineup. With they don't Keith have jerseys. Clearwater with, and Mike Reed and, you just, and Mike Weir. Yeah. You, you start with Miller and then Johnny you get Miller. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I love it. He's that. like next in line, bro. Let's, Let's do go. it. Okay, coming up, the elite reaction to the AP Top 25 preseason poll. And rise and shout out to BYU players on the grind. We'll have those specifics. This is BYU Sports Nation. Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at TRIO. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TRIOORUM.com. 
There are things happening in Seaburg. Explosions, dead fish. Seaburg, come for the beach, stay for the radiation. I'm worried that the dead fish might have something to do with element 126. We need to find out who's behind all of this. We can't just let them get away with it. So how do we get inside and get proof? You want to take down Green Corp? So do I. Friends don't abandon each other. What I did was wrong. If you'll give me another chance, I won't mess up. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. We have to get in there and put a stop to whatever they're doing. And if we can't? Then we go to plan B. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Yo, download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps today. Download the podcast as well if you want, or just pick one. You don't have to do all of it. Just one of them. Uh, subscribe, rate, and view it. Our question of the day, what is your reaction to the AP preseason top 25 poll, specifically BYU spot at number 25? At Tyler underscore pin nine on Instagram answers. What's up, Tyler? The Big 12 going to be nasty next year. Look at all those Big 12 in the top 25. Number nine, Oklahoma. Number 10, Baylor. Number 12, Oklahoma State. Cincinnati at 23. Houston, number 24. BYU, number 25. Texas, two spots out. Now, Brigham ain't going to start preseason top 25 next year. Okay, let's just call it like it is. Um, but the hope is that BYU uh, does what it does, which is overachieve. B hey, we think you're this. BYU goes, nah, we're going to be this especially the last two years. You can argue historically, right? Rare is the of the 11 previous top 25 times, seven of those, BYU finished top 25 as well. The chances are that BYU's got a good shot at that as well. Four preseason top 25 teams, however, on the schedule. I'm guessing two of those will finish top 25 when all is said and done. Man. But So there are a couple wins available there. Four top 20 teams. That's top 20. It's top hard. 20. This schedule's harder than last year. It is. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. At Gallagher Snow 11 on Instagram says, disappointed and disrespected, mm. referencing BYU. We all know how good BYU can be. This is just fuel to the fire. BYU will be number 15 before too long. They it, start 2 0? Maybe. Ooh, I don't know if they climb that high 2 0. I, I be think, number 10 Baylor. I think you need 3 0 to get that high. Yeah. Woo! 3 0, you're cracking the top 10 ish. You know. Be the top 10 team in week two. Yeah, how, well, how high would that rise? Yeah, I, don't know. I, love, I can't wait to find out. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Skipped all the NFL guys, huh? And to our four Cougs in the U.S. Amateur Championship in New Jersey. Best of luck, guys. Brock Goyan, uh, three over, 73 in his opening round. Three other BYU players still to go. Yeah, good luck. Our thanks to today's guests, Aaron Roderick and Carson Lundell. Sorry to Dennis. We ran at him. For Jeremiah and Spencer, shout out to Richard Wilson. Nice. He's part of that 2009 preseason top 25 team. Heck yeah, bro. See you tomorrow on BYUSN. Go Cougs. Fans for done. 25th.